Golly, oh goodness. Now I'm just going on an adventure. I can look That's backwards. so weird looking. I'm trying to I'm looking straight. backwards. What even is this? <laughs> This is the all new DJI Avada 2. In this video, we're gonna take you through all of the brand new things, what I think about flying it, use it in a professional environment, and let you guys know everything you need to know about the DJI Avada 2. There's a whole lot of things that I, as a traditional FPVist, I'm not used to in the DJI Avada 2. So first we're gonna take it to the park and experiment and just get comfortable with the drone itself. Oh, hey, didn't see you over there. Got a DJI Avada 2 here. Gonna put it to the test for the first time. I'm excited, I'm really excited. So I'll take one of our batteries out of the multi-charger, slap it in the back. She should boot right up. I missed the... Uh... <laughs> Love the FPV, I think they should bring that back. So let's set this out over here. All right, so let's start her out with a little line of sight. If I double press this button, double press and hold, should. Whoa. So it flies like a joystick. That's kind of what I need to get used to. As I go down, I'm pushing forward. And if, as I'm pulling up, I'm pulling back. And then if I park it, I just am looking around. Train over there, we're gonna avoid that. If you know, you know. Yeah, I, I, with practice, definitely can get pretty smooth with this controller. It's fun, it's definitely a unique experience. Well, let's see if we can uh, precision land it here. Up, 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 up. Well, I mean, I still had half a battery. That's pretty freaking stellar. Man, it's such a nice little package. I wish all FPV drones could be this good. If I turn head tracking on, please don't hit me drone. And as I look to the side, the whole drone turns and it kind of moves with me and if I look down the camera tilts up and down but it's unlocked from where the stick is pointing so if I hit the trigger while I'm pointing straight at myself it's gonna fly that way so I'm looking at me worried that as soon as I pull the trigger it's gonna hit me in the face but what it's actually gonna do is fly that direction so ready so it's uncoupled from where the camera is looking so you can see it's flying away so now if I kind of get out this way and I want to look to the right I look to the right and it keeps flying straight. And if I look forward, it's gonna fly forward. And if I look left, it's gonna keep flying forward. All right, drone, come back. I wanna fly you with a real controller. Suddenly the entire fire department rolls up and they're shooting water everywhere. First flight, full manual mode, here we go. I don't wanna mess this up, it's day one. I'm definitely in like 60 FPS mode, so I might want to change that. It's got a lot of power, honestly. Yeah, it's like when I put it in 60 FPS for the camera for filming, it's also displaying in 60 FPS where I'm kind of used to the 120 FPS of O3 or even regular DJI, so. Ooh, ooh. Impact detected, it says. This is a minor impact, don't worry. I do like that I can throw it in regular mode, just fly it around like a DJI drone. And if I climb up, stick it back into manual mode, center the sticks the way it tells me to, and then it switches it to manual, and now I'm back in manual. And then when I switch back into manual mode, it remembered the last angle of my camera. Ding. Peekaboo. Yeah. <laughs> cool.
Throughout my filming and testing in this video, I just wanted to take the Avada into as many different kinds of circumstances as I possibly could to see kind of what its limits are. The vast majority of the flying in this video was done in full manual mode, but we did take advantage of the opportunities of the DJI-ish modes that the Avada 2 has for you. Basically allows you to not think about maintaining your horizon and maintaining your altitude. Instead, you could just focus on getting the shot. I'm really happy with the results. You can see them throughout this compilation. All new in the DJI Avada 2 is the 04 transmission system. We just got 03. I've got tons of 03 stuff in all of my birds. So now if there might be an 04 transmission system coming, I'm going to be really sad because I just spent a lot of money on those. Um, but the goggles are backwards compatible with the 03 air units and with the original Avada. But we don't know if there is an independent 04 air unit coming yet. Hopefully, we'll see. So to test out the new 04 transmission, I wanted to get some extra range and some extra distance. So I took the entire DJI Avada 2 package with me on a commercial shoot in Salt Lake City to really push it to the limits. I've got the uh, Avada package here ready to roll. So we're gonna see if we can capitalize on the last couple minutes here of sunset in the mountains. Let's see if we can go capture something. I'm like taking a lift to like a hiking spot because I don't have any other options. So here we go. All right, it's a little later than sunset than we would really like, but uh, here. What do you think about the Avada for mountain diving? It was uh, a little sketchy, especially like what would happen is I'd get to the max altitude of the drone, which I set to its maximum available, which is like 1600 feet. But I was like flying really low to the face of the mountain. And like, as soon as I got to the very tip, it hit that max altitude and just like, and it, like almost flew into the side of the mountain. It was really scary, so. O4 transmission system is 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz changeable. DJI officially claims a 13 kilometer range for those distances. So in freedom units, that's like seven miles or so, maybe a little bit more. You can get 100 FPS back into your goggles at 1080p at a refresh rate of 90 hertz. That means you're getting more information per frame in your eyes than you used to on the DJI O3 system. The connection between the O4 and the goggles is now 60 megabits per second instead of 50 megabits per second. So there should be, in theory, a little bit more detail, a little bit more available information coming back. It does look better when you're in the O3 goggles. It's a great picture. That extra information that's coming back should only help you fly better, especially at the 24 milliseconds response rate. Well, I think that uh, rain is gonna bring my Salt Lake testing to an end. This particular spot was awesome because look at all the straggle and just flying it in like the regular DJI mode where it is kind of like in Cinewoop mode. And it allows me to kind of keep a really good consistent low line through the entire flight, which is really, really cool. So I don't know, it's kind of fun to like find ways to use the modes that I didn't think I would want to use, but gosh darn, it is getting really sloppy up in here. Yeah, I think we're going to get out of here, head back to the airport, head home. Thanks for coming on this uh, mini adventure. So now that I've had a good bit of experience flying it on my own, I needed to make sure that other people tested it out and talked about it in this video. So let's head down to Louisville to catch up with Winston and Eddie. I hate taking a look at things like this in a silo, so I always have to make somebody else try it and fly it. So I've brought the Avada 2 down to Louisville to make Winston and Eddie fly this drone. Guys, check it out. What do you think? This looks like a birth announcement. <laughs> it's a, a drone. It's a drone. Dude, that weighs nothing. I know. Oh, look at that lens. Ooh. Oh, I didn't see that. That is huge. This definitely looks like a nice upgrade to it. It's a lot smaller. Now, what I'm really interested in. Heyo. 
Let's see some new dogs. Front facing cameras, battery in the back though, which is convenient. Holy crap. How do you do this, Eddie? <laughs> <laughs> Very comfortable, actually. Dude, they're like night and day more comfortable. I feel like it's hanging from my forehead. There's no pressure on like the ridge you nose like the originals. Holy crap, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, wait a second. Toggle button, so much better than the touch interface. That's Thank so you, much DJI. better. Thank you. Are right, you guys ready to fly it? Absolutely. All right, let's do it. Who wants to go first? You got it. I don't know. All right, fine. Oh God, giant head paw here noticeably clearer on the screen. Like the text, you cannot see a single pixel. Holy crap difference. Okay. There's these two lenses straight on the front of it. So like when he's looking at me, it's really kind of disconcerting because it just looks like he's got these little bug eyes. eyes yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Hi, it's like a magnifying glass. Oh man, the future. I have no idea what I'm doing with this controller. So this is going to be interesting. So what I like to do is use the uh, that thumbstick to climb it. So just hold up and it'll climb and kind of stay in place. All right. So you push the trigger to go forward and then to turn it you you rotate your wrist you don't turn your whole body i <laughs> don't turn the whole body do i hold it out like this like i'm holding somebody at gunpoint dude it's really cruising okay ah. i'm uh, actually pretty impressed with your ability to fly that you should stop flying with a normal controller you're already way more in control dude, this is <laughs> oh, wow this is fun Dude, this thing rips. That thing screams. <laughs> I was just thoroughly impressed by that. Dude, it goes. It's taken me a second to get used to it, but it's not bad. You're right, very confidence inspiring. That is so intuitive. Like that was super easy. Do you think it's a better tool for people to learn how to fly? Definitely. This is almost better in certain ways. The barrier to entry is nothing. Okay, I'm gonna turn on head tracking. So we're doing head tracking with motion controls? Yeah, dude. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I'm not gonna lead you on this. I want you to kind of play with it. <laughs> so wait, why is it still going that way? Oh, you have to do that. Okay, okay. So I can do a little drive-by like this and look to the side. Oh, that's weird. Paul, you're an expensive friend to have. You can look straight down? That's what I'm saying. Dude, all right, so yeah, this is like your little VR headset up in the sky. Let's test the brakes. Skirt. <laughs> Hold on, let's oh, do a two-man fly. Golly, oh <laughs> goodness. Now I'm just going on an adventure. Dude, I can look so backwards? Can... Keep me going straight. How far back can I look? I can look backwards. <laughs> so weird looking. I'm, I'm looking straight. backwards. What even is this? <laughs> oh, this is weird. Yeah, park and look down. Just look around. It's kind of fun. The pivot mode. All right, you want to try it with the uh, RC3? Yes. Okay, Eddie, you want to go first since you're up? Uh, yeah, I already got cogs on. All right, try manual. Give yourself some altitude. Yeah, of course. Should be some pretty chill rates. He just goes crazy. <laughs> no. You can change your camera tilt on the fly, so just be careful with that if you do it. The camera does not tilt in manual mode. It's like just a regular acro. Yep. This thing does fly great though. Switch to manual mode. I mean, it feels locked in too. We have two major complaints about the controller itself. One is that it's really light, which it sounds like a bad thing to complain about, but it's like, it feels cheap. Um, and then second thing is that the stock sticks are too short. The throw is, is not very good for somebody who pinches because your fingers bump up against the bulkhead of the controller. Yep. And like the whole time he's flying it around, it's recording to its internal 60 something gig internal memory, full 4K 60. So you don't have to worry about having a card on you. And when that does fill up, it transfers off really fast because it's just a solid state basically. So you can still put an SD card in it if you want to. It's really, really cool to have that built in onboard memory and then for it to be expanded from where it was. Full throttle orbit. Go Avada go, go Avada go. Thoroughly enjoyable, confidence inspiring. It's rock solid, does all the flippies and floppies that you wanted to. I mean, once you learn the limits, I'm sure you can fly the, the props off this thing. I'm not even paying him for this ad. That was, that was pretty solid. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That was a lot of fun. It's kind of like the motion controller. You pick it up. If you know FPV, you can fly it like an FPV guy. That was actually a lot more like flying a fast Cine whoop. Yeah, that thing's fun, man. I think it's time to do some chasing. So Eddie brought out his uh, big old somewhat fast plane. And we'll show you what the Avada can do in terms of like its actual performance as a machine. The sun did peak, which is really nice. That means that exposure's changing. So it's time to slap on an ND filter. 
But you got your nice little case of ND filters. I'm gonna start with an ND16 here. Clips right onto the front of the drum. Just like that. Now we're ND'd up. Stop down. Skynet! So the new DJI Avada 2 adds a 155 degree field of view camera that has a 1 and 1.3 inch image sensor. That means that it's basically got the same sensor as the DJI Osmo 4, which looks absolutely incredible. The experience of being in the goggles and having like the really, really detailed picture and like seeing exactly what it's going to see. like. I feel like I'm seeing what the final product is gonna be. I'm actually having an experience right now. I'm not just capturing footage. Like, this is me actually enjoying myself quite a bit. You shoot up to 4K at 60 FPS and down to 2.7K at 120. Not only is the resolution of the camera high, but it also uses 10-bit color. It basically means that you have a lot more color information. Directors, directors of photography really like to see 10-bit color at the minimum. So that's a really big step up for this drone. And I think that its color depth actually really shows in this footage. I'm on the deck, like I can't get any lower. Nice low. Sick. <laughs> Staying low right? If I can. Low nope. right. Oh. oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Upside down. <laughs> no, oh, you're you. there too. <laughs> I'm hovering over top of you guys looking straight down at the carnage. <laughs> and I'm pulling up and away. <laughs> All right, ready whenever you are. So now that we've had a chance to look at the image quality out of the camera with DJI's modes, I also want to line it up against several other cameras. So first we need to test, does it work with gyro flow? And then let's compare it to GoPro Hero 12, DJI 03, so that we know what it looks like compared to those other profiles. So I took all of this equipment to a local park where I spilled my coffee, getting ready to set up for this shot. There's the coffee spill. Okay, so while that boils, the next thing that I want to test is gyro flow. So in my release notes, there's a note that it is compatible, the Avada 2, with gyro flow. So I'm gonna get the drone out, I'm gonna turn off all of the stabilization settings and attempt to stabilize it on the computer here. Let's go ahead and test that out to see if gyro flow does indeed work on the Avada 2. All right, so we're gonna start by turning off all of the stabilization, switch it to video mode, manual, four by three, 4K 60, wide field of view, EIS, fully off, D-log. So let's go ahead and fly this, and we'll bring it back here, plug it into gyro flow, and uh, see if it works at all. All right, let's slap this on uh, gyro flow and see what we get. Auto register. Oh, it picked something up. DJI Avada 2. DJI has leaked the uh, Avada 2. I didn't put that in there. Boom. Oh, yes. So we can use this in gyro flow. Avada 2 clearly does work with gyro flow, which means that we can do a pretty fair comparison side by side between GoPro 12 and the Avada itself. I think that the Avada camera is starting to look really, really good. It's got that DJI log format. It's very flat looking. Like, I think it looks awesome. Uh, lots of good dynamic range in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and also throw up the uh, GoPro 12 and record that for gyro flow settings. We'll set them up side by side and see how they look for you guys to decide. So I'm gonna record the GoPro and the Goggles 3. That way you can see GoPro versus DJI 03 versus the Avada kind of all in one. I'm gonna fly the actual original Avada and record the camera here so that we can compare that to the brand new camera in the Avada 2 because it's such an awesome upgrade. And actually, while we're talking about it, pay attention to the loudness of this and the shrill sound. Like, it's kind of brutal. 
I forgot about that. Now switch it over to the other one. That's so much more pleasant of a sound. It sounds much better. When we line up all of the footage of the Avada 2 and the Avada 1 and the O3 and the GoPro 12, I think that that D-Log format really shines. You can see how contrasty and harsh the GoPro and the O3 and the Avada 1 are compared to the Avada 2. You look, for example, at the back of trees that are in the sun, you can see what's in there, what's in that color, what's in that detail in the Avada 2 when you can't see that on the GoPro 12 or even on the Avada 1. You look at the O3 and the GoPro 12 and you see how much darker and contrasty and harsh everything else is. And that just doesn't give you much wiggle room in terms of making it match with other cameras. The Avada 2 will be easier to pair with other higher end cameras. Like for example, this FX6 that I'm talking to you on right now is filming in S-Log3. So it's got that kind of wide dynamic range sort of goal and it makes it more cinematic, makes it look better, makes it easier to work with in post. I prefer the Avada 2 footage over all of these because it just looks so much better in that D-Log format. So tell me what you guys think, but for me, Avada 2 takes the cake. So now that we've compared the different cameras, let's take a step back and look at some of the peripherals that come with the Avada 2, like the brand new DJI Goggles. Three. There's a lot of good things about them. There's a couple of things I don't like about them. First of all, let's talk about this integrated battery. From a convenience perspective, it's really, really nice to have this here, right? I don't have to go digging for the battery. The battery's always attached to the goggles. There's just no way to misplace it. However, runtime, right? The battery is not replaceable, so I can't just put on a new battery. On the previous version of the goggles, the batteries would honestly be done before I was done recording a GoPro card. On this, it's lasted you know, for probably two hours worth of actual flights, and uh, I haven't even worried about charging it. So for me right now, the battery is not being replaceable so far, hasn't bothered me, and uh, these support fast charging, so, you know, when you're between flights, just plug it in if you're worried about it. This does have a power button now, so you can turn it on and off with the actual button here on the goggles rather than the button on the battery, which I actually really prefer. I love this. When you're putting them on, loosen them up, get it over, get it in place, crank it down, Boom, it's ready to go. It's not quite as fiddly as like getting to a strap and like doing all that stuff. I really, really like that part of it. My least favorite part is this. It just feels really icky on my face. Like if I was sweaty at all, it would just feel really nasty. It would just, ugh. The only other thing that I want to mention about this is with the IPD and the uh, focus adjustment in here, when you change it, it actually makes a change on the screen. So you can actually spin it and find the number that matches your vision and be able to reset it back to that really quick or just leave it like that. Pretty cool. I, I, I'm a pretty big fan of the new goggles. Really, really good upgrades. Really like the integrated battery. I'm worried that it's going to cause a problem later, but for now, I'm a pretty big fan of this whole setup altogether. One thing that is really exciting about the DJI Avada 2 is that new big sensor should actually have a lot better low light performance. So I took it out into some really low light environments. I think that this footage looks absolutely incredible. With the extra dynamic range of the D-Log and the bigger sensor, you get a lot less noise, you can get a brighter image, and I think that this just looks so good for low light footage out of a camera that is this small. So in addition to just like updates to the camera and the flight performance, the battery life is also supposedly a little bit better. So. Got two drones. I'm indoors FAA. We'll see how much longer the Avada 2 goes than the Avada 1. I made the mistake of using my phone as the stopwatch and now I have nothing to do for the next 20 minutes. Now, this isn't really a truly fair comparison because the uh, Avada 2, the batteries are brand new. The Avada 1, the batteries are about a year old. It's kind of intimidating, but uh, they should be pretty similar. I'm gonna go get my coffee, I'll be back.
Uh, another thing I wanted to note is that these guys are far enough off the ground that they shouldn't be getting any kind of ground effect, or they're not getting the benefit of it, rather. Another thing I should note is, like, I've got some glue on here from uh, previous experiments with mounting GoPros to the Avada 1, and there's some wires, so it's technically a little bit above the weight that it's supposed to be. Whatever. It's YouTube, it's not science. All right, guys, we're uh, now seven minutes in. How do we feel so far? Windy, got it. How about you? Not very talkative group. Do you guys think I should build an Avada out of these chunkers? I don't even know what size this is. It's too big. What do you think? I don't know what return to launch behavior is like. Hopefully it just lands. So I guess I might have to be ready to take over on this one. This one's blinking two. No, now it's down to one. This one's still solid two blink, two lights. Oh, 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 oh. A lot of two still going pretty strong. One light and one blinky light. Die, I'm done watching you. It says uh, critically low battery. Aircraft landing in three, two, one, zero, with 11% uh, remaining. So I'm not sure totally where DJI is getting like the 23 minutes, but it is longer than uh, the Avada one, so it's at least better, but don't get me wrong, I am not complaining about 17 minutes of flight because I'm used to four minutes with traditional FPV drones. So, but yeah, flies a lot longer than the Avada one. And then the final test that I wanted to do was kind of think through what would happen if I tried to get like my set of standard FPV action scene shots? So me, Winston and Eddie went on a kind of adventure ride on our electric dirt bikes to kind of see if we could set up a little bit of an action sequence to check out us kind of mopping through the woods of these dirt bikes. We're not really all that talented on them. So I apologize that we're not professional athletes. Check out how good the Avada looks chasing these guys through the woods. I really wish that I could get this at 2398. I think that would really enhance the way that this footage looks, but we have to settle for that 60 FPS because of the limitations of the 04 transmission. And I need to have that 60 FPS at minimum in the goggles. That was absolutely a blast and this thing is a complete mess now. We're just filled with dirt in there now. We crashed it a bunch. I changed one prop. That was the only thing that I had to change on this, but this thing took a beating. I wasn't worried about it crashing or breaking at all. All in all, the Avada 2, it does an absolutely fantastic job. DJI did provide the Avada 2 to me free of charge, but they are not required to watch this video before it goes out. They have no influence over my opinion and what I say. Honestly, my biggest gripe with it is that it doesn't support 2398. That's a pretty big oversight. And I think we'd get a lot of really cool footage. Altogether, thinking about everything that this thing brings, this whole bag set up for the fly more combo, or just sticking the drone in there and having everything ready to get some pretty amazing shots. Like I didn't have to worry about how much stuff I was bringing with me. It's all just combined into this one package and I can go out, have a good time, get some really cool shots and come back. If you're looking at the Avada 2, I absolutely would highly recommend it. I wouldn't be pushing this if I didn't think that it was something that was really fun. You can see that we all had a blast flying it in the video. And I think that the product, the, the results, the footage speaks for itself in terms of what this thing is actually capable of. So thank you very much for checking out the DJI Avada 2. Check the links in the description below if you're considering purchasing one, because that will support me making more videos like this. All in all, love this thing. I will keep flying this thing. And when I'm going on trips with my family or stuff where I'm not necessarily bringing a bunch of other equipment this is going in the bag this thing really knocks it out of the park so thanks very much for watching this video thanks for checking out the avada 2 and stay flying